A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. As AI starts to filter into mainstream use, increasingly dramatic headlines are hyping deep learning as the process that may soon give us sentient robots and self-driving cars. Today's speaker, psychologist Gary Marcus, explains the limitations of deep learning and suggests a few ways in which we could improve machine intelligence thoughtfully and efficiently. We're not making as much progress in artificial intelligence, I think, as the world seems to think. So you read headlines today, and they're all about deep learning. Scientists see promise in deep learning programs. Deep learning will soon give us super smart robots. Well, that's what most people think. I'm actually not so sure. Intelligence, it's important to remember, is not homogenous. There are lots of things that go into intelligence. There's perception, there's common sense, there's planning, analogy language, reasoning, these are all part of what we would call intelligence, and, and many more things. If you know Howard Gardner's notion of multiple intelligences, I think it's fundamentally right. There are lots of things that go into intelligence. We've made enormous progress in AI, but really just in one piece of that, which is in perception. And even in perception, we haven't got it all figured out just yet. So here's something machines can now do very well. They can identify a person. So you train them on a lot of data about some celebrities, and sure enough, it identifies that this is Tiger Woods. Once in a while, it might get confused and think it's a golf ball. Well, the way that we do this nowadays is with big data, and we derive statistical approximations to the world from that big data. And the idea is you have a series of inputs into the system with labels on them. So this is a robot, you get told it's a robot, the system either gets that correct or it gets it wrong. If it gets it wrong, you adjust the stuff in between. It works perfectly fine for simple categorization, but it doesn't work the minute the problem gets even a little bit harder. But the broader point that I want to make is that what we're good at right now as a field in artificial intelligence is the routine things for which we have big data. So if you have a lot of data about opening doors in a particular environment, you're great, but what if the environment changes? Then you have only little data, then you have unusual but important things, or what I jokingly call small data. And Humans are really good at small data, but machines still aren't really very good at it. And things get even worse when you get to scientific reasoning. The minute deep learning became popular and was a front page news story in the New York Times, I said, realistically, deep learning is only part of the challenge of building intelligent machines. Such techniques lack ways of representing causal relationships, what did what to, to whom, and are likely to face challenges in acquiring abstract ideas. Four years later, there's so much hype about deep learning and billions of dollars of investment, but we really haven't had progress on the causal relationships, the abstract ideas, the logical inferences, and so forth. Um, and it reminds me of an old parable. The parable is about building a ladder when you want to get to the moon. Solving science through AI is getting to the moon. Selling more advertisements isn't. So we can use AI now to tell you what else you might buy if you buy my other books. You might like this one, um, and that's great. But if you don't buy the book, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it really matters when it comes to things like medicine. We want the AI to really do it right. Well, building ladders that are getting us an inch closer, an inch here, just might not be the right approach. What I think we need to think about is the difference between data and abstract understanding. And it's easy for a big data collection machine to organize that data. But what you really want is essentially the lines. You want the idea about what is the relationship behind this data so that you can interpolate where you haven't seen things before, extrapolate beyond what you've seen before. Which means, really, you want your AI systems to do something they haven't done, which is to ask the question of why. Not just how much and when and what is correlated with what, but why are the things in the world related to um, other things? And I think we have only one model of a creature that asks this question a lot. And that would be the human toddler. My daughter, Chloe, she's two and a half, and she asks me why roughly 20 times a day. So, you know, why is it dark now? Why are you wearing a hat now? She's just constantly asking why questions. Her brother is a little older. I was on the road, I was giving a talk, and my wife sent me this text message. She says, to, to my son, Alexander, which of your animal friends, he's about two and a half years old, which of your animal friends will come to school today? And he gives the answer, Big Bunny, Bear and Platypus are eating. 
So she walks to the next room where his bedroom is, and she sees that he's created a, a diorama of bear and platypus, and they are, in fact, eating. Um, so at this point, he was 100% honest in his answers. Um, and what does this tell us? Well, one is that he understands complex syntax. So in a linguist term, this is called a WH question. Which of your animals will um, uh, come to school today? If you've ever worked with Siri, you know that syntax is still a challenge sometimes for computers. Um, he was able to give novel answers depending on recent updates to the state of the world. In other words, instead of memorizing things and finding like the most popular answer that had been Googled for before, he was thinking about what had happened right now, what was the current state of the world, and directly reflecting that in his answers. He was doing logical reasoning. If they're over there, they're not coming with me. Right? So he's able to integrate all of this. And importantly, from the perspective of AI, he didn't do this with massive data. He did it with a modest amount of data. Two years, basically, of people talking to him. The first six months, I don't think he understood the phonology. <laughs> so two years of people talking to him and no direct access to what we call in my trade labeled data. Right? So he can, on the fly, make inferences for things for which he has a very small amount of data. This brings me, I think, to my main point, which is very much inspired by where we are. sit now, um, which is CERN is this vast interdisciplinary um, and multi-country consortium to solve particular scientific problems. Maybe we need the same thing for AI. So most of the efforts in AI right now are individual companies or small labs working on small problems, like how to sell more advertising and things like that. Um, what if we brought people together to try this moonshot of doing better science? And what if we not only brought together machine learning experts and engineers who can make faster hardware, but researchers who look at cognitive development, cognitive science? I think maybe we could make some progress. I'm not saying human beings are better than machines at everything. Humans aren't nearly as good as arithmetic. But we are better at asking why, at understanding a science. Maybe we can learn something from human children. So here's a way to think about it. We've been working on computers for 60 years. We've made them much smaller, so we made them much faster, much more energy efficient. This watch that I have can do everything that ENIAC could do with an entire room uh, 60 years ago. And yet, we still haven't understood how to program into a machine the flexibility of human thought, or the ability of a child, a toddler, a tiny toddler, to learn something new. Maybe it's time that we try. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Geneva, Switzerland. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx CERN. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Visit our website at ted.com slash TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.